Hello and thank you for joining the Thursday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, bandits storm Federal Government College, Buni Jury in Kebi State, abduct dozens of students as Niger Governor lament over 150 kid captives, says bandits informants are in his government. Hoodlums behead man, raise former emo commissioner, lawmakers houses, and later on the show, tremendous crowd received Governor Akire Dolu after appeal court win as Jagede PDP head to the Supreme Court. I'll be hanging out with Asukwa James, Paul Dada, while Babajide Koladi Otitoji will be joining us from Abuja. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. Worldwide abductions continue to assault our collective sensibilities and the bandits are getting wilder. Few hours ago, bandits stormed the Federal Government College, Biniyari, in Kebi State and abducted about 50 students. The bandits killed the policeman who tried <laughs> to challenge them in Niger State and 150 children kidnapped at Islamia school are yet to be freed. Speaking at a function in Mina, Governor Abubakar Sani Bello lamented continued detention of the captives and revealed that some politicians in his government are aiding and abating criminals engaged in kidnapping and banditry by providing information to them. We knew it all along, Asuko James, that look, this... Um, Ragtag looking guys, tattered looking bandits. The money they claim, 400 million, 500 million, mm -hmm. that's is it with monkeys and baboons, they'll be spending it in, inside the bush. We knew that they will have collaborators within uh, and outside, and especially now we're seeing that the governor of Niger State is in saying that even in his own cabinet. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it seems to be a very long rope, a chain of, um, they have this um, organized <laughs> crime chain. Mm. You know, the, the, let, let's even go with the, the first um, story, which is uh, the five teachers who are adopted with unspecified number of um, um, students. You know, it's, it's very sad that this is happening. That is the school. <clears throat> it's happening at this period. The whole Northwest is in shambles, you know, as we speak, students going to school are not safe. And I know that there was a time that either the World Bank or the UN, the World uh, Bank actually like gave money for Safe School Initiative. Mm. So that money, where is that money going to? Have they distributed the money and we do not know where the money, uh, or they, they, distributed, they distributed the money and the money did not get to the right source? I think that is where we begin to ask those questions because we cannot send our children to school and then they are being adopted by some ragtag um, um, people you know bandits who Terrorists. who to me until today i see them as very heartless look at the 136 people that the, um, that were kidnapped some some weeks back till date we've not heard anything from them but rather what we heard that the, the, the children are sick yeah. and they are still demanding 150 million from where? Where do they want uh, uh, just the, look at the, the family, family, the look parents? At the environment. You know, the children will be sick. They, of course, there's no way because to shelter them. If, the, the even food. even if you you walk under the sun, and you are if you are a child and you walk under the sun for for long, and you are a child, you walk under the rain for long, especially in the north that the but weather is always, is always so harsh. Is to the extreme. Is that if it's very cold or it's going to be very hot? The children now are. Most of them are sick. Not sheltered. No, not under any shelter. Ayo, we are talking about bandits who are not living like human beings. It is only when somebody is living, you know that the person is sheltered, that is when you know that, okay, fine. They will have a little bit of comfort. But we are talking about thick forests. And these children are there. We don't even know what they are feeding them with. Honestly. You know? And these guys, are, they've been demanding for money. Where do you want the government to get money? They, even... 
the Niger State Governor at several times, at several fora, said that he had tried as much as possible to see how bandits would be dealt with in the state. There was a time he said he even ordered that to drones for him, at least to employ technology into you know, this um, whole insecurity in the state. They didn't give him the opportunity for him to use the drones. Now, these bandits, what they want to do is to try and cripple the states and make sure that he doles out money. Now, from what I heard from Niger State, the governor says that he doesn't trust people that are around. Hmm. Now, that trust is the major thing that he said there. Not that people around him, he can't the work with them. Politicians in his government yes, are know, aiding and abetting criminals. What he's saying is that there are some people that, okay, fine, we want to give these bandits ransom. Who do we even trust? We'll take that money to those people. That is the major thing. Very lucrative because, because yes, because <laughs> do you want to say okay and so so person Yes, come. I remember one yeah, instance. It will be very the, difficult. In Zafara states that they claim they gave the bandits eight hundred million and then, and then somebody the edited the money yes, again. Yes, the bandits are saying you know, no, we so got only one fifty. That is the major problem the Nigerian state government is having. So who does he trust to, okay, fine, we have the money, who are we going to give the money? Are those bandits who are claiming 150, are they the original bandits holding on to these children? Such a Nobody knows. Enterprise. No, that is where, that is the, 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 the place where the governor is at this time. It's a, it's a very big problem right now. Hmm. Paul, now we have a situation whereby um, 50 students again to a region that is educationally disadvantaged, and over time, they've been trying to encourage um, parents to allow their works to go to school. Now, this is what we have. This will pose like a big setback. Yeah, the bandits know where to hit Nigeria. They know uh, the, the parts of modern Nigeria's body to hit, and that is going after schools. Going after schools. Schools are easy targets. Schools are soft targets. And, um, you know, I, um, it's very difficult now. I mean, there's no, it's not encouraging, you know, to uh, actually, you know, to even send children to school, you know. Many parents will not be encouraged to send their children to school because schools are now, uh, schools are very vulnerable. Now, up to this moment, we still don't have uh, a strategy to protect our schools, you know. We've said it 1,001 times. I'm going to say it another 1,001 times, and yet another 1,001 times, that you cannot be doing the same thing the same way and expect a different result. Mm -hmm. uh, NSCDC was given a mandate, I remember, and I've said it before, was given a mandate to come up with a strategy on how to protect the schools. All NSCDC has told us is that 62,000 schools in Nigeria are vulnerable to attacks. So what we keep having is analysis from government and government agencies who are supposed to profess solutions or execute solutions. So they sit down like us and analyze. Now, you call these bandits ragtag, but I must tell you that the weapons they carry are sophisticated. Ragtag, you call them, but the weapons are sophisticated. They have been trained on how to handle uh, these weapons. Now, look at what happened in Kebi. A policeman, just one policeman, tried to challenge uh, motorcycle riding uh, <coughs> bandits who came with what? Who came with sophisticated weapons. And of course, his fate was sealed. So we, we need to find a way to, 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 to fix this issue. Now, we are talking about, um, thank God they are doing constitutional amendments, OK? I feel the issue of state police should, should, should just take uh, priority. The United States governor was saying that, um, he also said they were, they were equipping, um, is it, uh, what, what's it called now? Vigilantes. Yes, special vigilantes. Vigilantes, what can they do? Can they confront bandits? Maybe they'll, be, they'll, they'll help in the area of intelligence. No, I think the, the special... Gathering the and all of that. They, yeah, and they, they will operate in the city. Some of them, mm, use, yes. uh, they use the uh, local... Uh, you can't confront, mm -hmm. you can't confront AK-47 with gang guns. 
And then, it's not the uh, I'm not with saying, local, local they the, uh, the local jazz. That they, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> local jazz. Local jazz is very limited. But let, let me also say something. There, I think there is something that I, I, I must not uh, miss talking about here. What the governor said, let us, not, let us not miss it. What the governor of Niger State said, he said it and he was very clear about it. He said there were people in his government mm. who were aiding and abetting the bandits by providing information to them. And I, I don't want to believe that the governor just woke up and said saying what he didn't know. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He, he had information. Mm -mm. Again, Babajide, Babajide joins us from Abuja now. Now, Governor Abubakar Sani Bello. He said the continued detention of the kids uh, in captives, and he revealed that some politicians in his government are aiding and abetting criminals engaged in kidnapping and banditry by providing information to them. Now, this is coming from the governor, and uh, you know he's, he has access to the security report and everything. What do you make of this situation? It's getting complicated, so these bandits are not acting alone. Certainly, they are not acting alone. They've never acted alone. Uh, when our friend um, Sule Yao Sule talked about the fact that people were buying houses Businesses. in Kano and insisting on paying cash, hmm. you could deduce clearly from that that these were. Um, the same people behind these bandits. Because the bandits you see dressed in tattered clothes and all that, they are working for mm -hmm. individuals. It's such a shame that our intelligence gathering system is so suspect, is so weak that we are unable to unravel the mm. big masquerades mm -hmm. behind these bandits. And until we are able to unravel the big man masquerades behind um, these bandits, we will not get far. We will not um, uh, be able to put an end to this nonsense. Beyond that, I think also that our strategy, our military strategy, has to be top notch because. I still believe that military action is the best way to put an end to the nonsense that we are seeing across our nation. If we do not exterminate these people, they will continue to recruit people. Their numbers will grow. As, as we know now in Zamfara, there are far more bandits than security forces. Mm -hmm. So how do you defeat them when our armed forces in Zamfara state are inferior in number to the, to, to, to the bandits. How do you take them on? The governor has said that there are up to 1,000 bandits in the state. Mm -hmm. He will never even be able to have a quarter of that. Mm -hmm. So how does he now, how does he uh, confront the bandits? So if we have this kind of situation, the, 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 the best thing is to try and defeat these guys militarily. Reading reports today about what happened in Yauri, I'm particularly disappointed because I have spoken about the fact that Yauri area in Kebi State, mm. given that it is located not far away from Rijau local government in Niger State, banditry will be common. So we have a situation in which the bandits have moved now from Niger State, from uh, Rijau local government which is less than 50 kilometers to, to uh, Kebi State. Kebi They've moved State. into Kebi from uh, Rijau local government in Niger State, and then they are now putting uh, our people under all kinds of misery. It's unfortunate that a unity school, mm -hmm. where you have children from across our country, yes. has now come under attack uh, by bandits. So we've got to take this uh, problem more seriously. Every time people read about bandits, uh, 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 I mean, overrunning security provided in schools and taking away children, it's a massive shame on our country. It has to stop. How do we encourage people to go to school? When even the few of them who are going to school, 
They are not safe. They've taken away teachers. They've taken away. This is a mean school. This is a mean school. And they've taken away uh, the, the, the students and their teachers. They even had the effrontery to, to steal a police vehicle. They dropped three of their own uh, motorbikes and took two vehicles with them. They tried to steal a civilian bus. In that picture, you see a civilian bus. Mm -hmm. They wanted to steal the civilian bus, but the civilian bus, the engine didn't start. Mm -hmm. If the engine had cooperated with them, they mm -hmm. would have loaded the student into the civilian bus. And but they took away the students kilometers. on motorbikes because up to 200 of them came to the school. Hmm. Oh. We've got to get more serious about uh, this issue. It's really perplexing. Hmm. And I feel very, very sad because there were alarms that I raised that the security forces didn't uh, do something about. In a situation where you have up to 200 bandits transporting, coming from wherever, you, God knows where, and they have a free reign during the time of operation, mm. they spend some hours, they are not in a hurry, mm -hmm. and they are now even taking those students, you know, going with them, abducting them, and taking them through uh, uh, um, 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 Okada. Mm. And that operation will go seamlessly for us. Yeah, I, you, you also notice that where most of these federal government colleges are, are located, they are way out of the... Janiki, you can Lagos. see that it's not within the town, sure. you know, and I think it was strategic, you know, where yeah, people the, can enough come, land, enough, enough uh, land, your land mass for you, for, for mm. everything to be there, including um, for, sport, for sporting activities mm. and all, so that you don't need to come out. So. Now that the, yeah, no, okay. that was when the country was good mm -hmm. because I, I'm just looking at even the one in Jabo. They I just noticed that it's even on the road. If you, that you won't even know because if you are coming from Elysia, you enter and mm. it's just way out. You can't even know that that is a federal government college. Mm. So now that we know that this uh, is Africa, in Shagamu. yes, the, even the one in Shagamu, you know. Mm. So now that we know that this is a big problem, I'm just looking at where this school is. How many houses will be around that school? Mm -hmm. It will be miles away or kilometers away. Mm -hmm. So when these guys will be operating, nobody will know. So the best thing is when we have these federal government colleges, where we have these schools outside the capital city, they should be secured. We don't want a situation whereby police, you just say, oh, you have two, you just put maybe one or two police officers and you give them vehicle, they will just go there and you won't, they, they won't get harmed. Even if they are armed, you are talking about close to 200 bandits coming. And you know when they come, they come like flies. Because they are coming with bikes, mm -hmm. with guns. So it means that the entire system concerning saving and securing our schools should be changed. It is, this is the period that the Minister for Education has to sit down because even now, I, I feel that the Minister of Education is supposed to now declare an emergency and sit down with those who are involved in securing the schools and say, how do we secure schools in Nigeria? Because we are just talking about the Northwest. The Northeast is there. We, don't even, we are not even talking about that one. The down South, we also have a situation. We can't say that everything is OK. So the Minister for Education the Minister of Defense, the police, and even the security chiefs are supposed to meet now and begin to look at, fashion out ways on how they can secure schools in the Northwest and everywhere in the country. Because we are talking about our future, Ayo. These children are the future leaders of tomorrow. If, for, if now they are, we have bandits who are kidnapping our future, what happens? Will Nigeria have a future? Because that is, that is what we should be thinking. Will Nigeria have a future? Now, let's talk about rescue now. I've not, I, because of what happened in Kaduna State, those students that their parents had to pay 150 million for their release and everything. And then in Kaduna? Because of the Minister of Information had said it categorically that, look, banditry and everything is not uh, in the purview of the federal government. That's a state thing. Now, a situation by Governor Nasser Rufai says, I am not negotiating. The mm. wife is saying that I would rather die in the hands of bandits. And 
it's just even if the parents want to reach out, the governor is even threatening to prosecute such parents. Now we have a situation now that these 50 new people, huh. their parents will just be on their own. It's bad enough that our children cannot go to school. They cannot secure, the government cannot secure them. Now when we have a situation like this, nobody is talking about a rescue operation. Nobody is looking at how to serve, what will serve as deterrent to these bandits. Absolutely, I think um, uh, the governor needs to solve better. He needs to solve better, you know. Says, when he says you have to prosecute people, <laughs> prosecute people uh, who will have to uh, pay ransom to uh, bandits who have kidnapped their children, he needs to solve better. Uh, but let's be realistic here. We cannot sustain, we cannot sustain the payment of ransom to bandits. It has got to stop at some point. Okay. Now, which is why I think the one, over 150 children that were kidnapped yeah. in Islamia, mm -hmm. they are still yeah, yeah. They are still so there. 150 million. In the, in the right, they are asking for. Yeah. They are asking for children, one, 150 million. million. And <laughs> some of these uh, children, they might kill them. Some of them no, might no, end no. up dead. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm talking about the long run. Now that we have not, we don't have, we have not, uh, uh, we have not gotten our hearts together on how to deal with the bandits. We can still pay. The ransom. But what I want to say actually is this. I, I want to reiterate what uh, Baba Jide said. The time has come for us to take the battle to the bandits. The time, we, the time has come for them to be exterminated. You see, we cannot continue to be at the mess. We cannot continue to be reactive. Now, the way, by the time we start killing them, by the time we start destroying some of them, the, the, that is the way I think we can, on the long run, deal with this thing. Uh, uh, Jide, let's say from Jide, I, I read in Punch newspaper yesterday of a certain operation going on and um, the, the military that has to do with the Navy that they've started a kind of massive bombardment. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe you have any information to support that. Yes, uh, we, 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 we started taking the battle to these guys. We good. started taking the battle to them. And um, you, you will have read some reports uh, in one of the northern papers. Yes, the cows. 1,000 um, cows. Yes, were, that they were, were counting. I mean, was talking about government. losing some cows. But the, the, the truth is, yes, there will be collateral damage. Mm -hmm. I disagree mm -hmm. that up to 1,000 cows um, uh, <laughs> uh, cattle were killed because there was another report that indicated that only about 50 cattle got killed. So uh, the truth is, sometimes too, because these guys are cattle rustlers, they steal cattle, and they, they stay not far away even from, um, uh, uh, from ordinary people. And so there the will be collateral damage mm -hmm. when rustlers. these attacks are happening. You've seen also reports about uh, uh, air bombardment by troops, by the Air Force in Niger State. But this is not the sort of um, 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 military operation that I want. I want to see a coordinated military operation across the length and breadth of the Northwest, where we have um, uh, banditry uh, taking place. That is what I want to see. Because all of these communities that you see, the, the all of these states, they are linked to one another. Mm -hmm. I've said before that a state like Kasina, sharing border with up to six local governments in Zamfara, when you are attacking bandits in one uh, local government, they will move to another lo uh, local government in another state. So it makes it difficult for them to track down. But if we have a coordinated military campaign, we block all their exit points. This kind of military campaign will take months. Mm -hmm. We cannot do it Sustain in this mm -hmm. manner. We have to invest seriously. We have to be ready for it. All the ordinances, ordinances that the military needs, the bombs that they need, we have to buy everything. It will cost us billions. Mm -hmm. We have to buy more military vehicle trucks and the rest of them. Buy more ground attack helicopters because we simply don't have enough. So once the air bombardment is happening, then the soldiers so, can soldiers, move in yes. and take over and, and do the the, uh, yes. this forest from mm. these guys. Yes, we have to do that. Mm. 
Okay. We've got to do that. If we do not do that, whatever measure we are doing now, we are, we are, we are bombing them in uh, Zamfara. We are bombing them in Niger. No, it has to be coordinated. We have seen now that, look at Kebi State. They were not in Kebi before. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From but they've now come into Kebi through Zamfara and through uh, Niger, Niger State, State. through mm -hmm. Rijau in uh, Niger, and uh, 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 some other communities uh, in, uh, in uh, Zamfara State. They've come into Kebi now. All right. So we have that problem, and we've got to deal with the problem by having a coordinated military uh, campaign against them that will put an end to them. Okay, you well, hold your breath there. Well, most of the people that have spoken break. with have said they are not Nigerians. Hmm. That the people who carried out this attack are not Nigerians. They may look like Fulani, but the, it is not only in Nigeria that you have Fulanese. Hmm. These okay. are foreigners that we are dealing with. They are coming from Niger Republic, coming from Mauritania and other places. Why are we so wide open to all comers? We shouldn't hmm. be wide open to all comers. Hmm. Okay, we take this break. When we come back, we discuss more. It's still generally stand out. We'll be right back after this breather. Please don't go away. To favorite news and current affairs program on TV. This is Journalist Standout, reaching you from TVC News. Yeah, I have Asukwa James is still in the studio. Paul Dada is also with me. And um, Babajide Kolade Otitoju is um, firing from Abuja. Suspected hoodlums who disguised as local vigilante agents stormed Oguamire village in Osu local government area in Imo State and burnt down the residence of the immediate past Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice of the state, that's Supreme Aka Olisa. Now, and that of the member representing Osu constituency in the state House of Assembly, Ikene Nodumele. The government also beheaded a man at the lawmaker's house. The state police commissioner, Abu Tujaro, has promised to arrest those who carried out the dastardly act. Asuko is not looking good from um, the East, especially when you talk about people, hoodlums in the um, Imo states. Imo that used to be tourism, um, tourism, um, tourist attraction before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, hospitality and everything. So, like, now, they like the home of hospitality. <laughs> like the home of hospitality. You, Imo is down, like upside down. Yeah. I was meant to attend um, a, burial, sorry, a burial last week in Imo State, and um, that place is just um, 35 minutes from the outskirts of um, Oweri. Mm. On the last minute, I chickened out. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You, you know, that, can, that, that, is, that is the problem we are now having in Imo. You know, I was looking at... Um, a couple of videos, and uh, I, I spoke with a couple of people in Imo, okay. especially the, those who are professionals. And um, Imo, like last year, 25% of the inflows from diaspora, Imo actually had 25% of mm. the inflows. That is, monies coming in from outside, mm. going into Imo. Outside, throughout the whole federation, Imo had 25%. 25%? Yes. And that has aided development, development, massive development. And that is why if you go to Imo, you see hotels, Weary. hotel and tourism, they were really cashing out. Mm. So the government was making money from tourism, you know, apart from FAC and all that. So when people are not really happy, because in fact it is even in Imo that at some point, the people around Imo, the state around Imo, they see Imo as their, their own enjoyment center. So you leave Anambra, you come to Imo, you relax. Weekend, maybe by Sunday, you are going back to Anambra, you are going back to Enugu. You know, that is how Imo used to be until this happened. The, the local government, like the one in Olu, Osu, have been bedeviled by these attacks. It's either they go in for INEC offices or they go for police stations. And I know there was a time that we, we are talking about how to solve this problem. Hmm. The major problem that I have witnessed is that most of the leaders now, in that... This is security. Is it an internal, thing, internal, uh, internal crisis or an 
with crisis from outside. Now a, a, a five trailer uh, load of, uh, you know, I don't know what they were carrying. People, they just apprehended people yes. coming Come from going, the north yes, going, to the east. Going to so the east. The theory now is that, look, that these guys are the are unknown gunmen. Gun that people from outside mm -hmm. are the one coming to wreck havoc. havoc. Within Imo, that an you, average you know, Igbo man you know, is not destructive. So the place of ESN, we don't know now. You know that you know that is another theory. You know, nobody no, report has not even come out saying where. Yes, we know that they are going to Imo. Ayo, I can decide to leave Lagos and say I want to go to Abia to go and make a living. You understand. So nobody knows where those guys are. That is why. What if you have like hundred young no, men? No, wait now. Are you, so wait. Let's assume that they have those hundred guys going to Imo. Till date, since when they were caught, nothing. The government has not come out to say these hundred people that we are caught, uh, they are going to Imo. We have profiled them. They are actually going for legitimate business or illegitimate business. And that, that is the I, only and I don't way. Think, I don't think any governor. <laughs> Of has course. that kind of right? Yes, of course. It is the federal government because they are. It was even the the army that actually caught them. They handed them to police. Now the police have not said anything. So what we are expecting the government. So because that is the only way you can calm freight names. And people would now say, okay, situate the people who are calling themselves unknown gunmen and situate it properly, because hmm. the people in the east. Hmm. I want to say it now. The people in the east are not happy that this is happening because they believe that they are the sort of people that they can live by themselves without any support. That is the kind of people that they are. Mm. So if they caught a couple of people moving into Imo and nothing has been heard from the government, then there is a major gap between the, gov the government and the people in the Southeast region. Hmm. Who are those escalated crises in Imo states? Or, or in the entire South Southeast. In the entire Southeast. Yes. The entire Southeast. Entire Southeast. So, if, if, is if, if you look at the, the, the way this one happened, uh, the people that were, the person that was killed, the places they uh, actually, uh, they, they attacked, you have the impression that this was calculated. They were going behind it. It wasn't, they didn't pick these targets ra randomly. So some person. An internal thing. Uh, well, it could be, could be. But that is, this calls for, you know, investigation that is not shoddy. Mm -hmm. Because they are, the, the way police uh, undo things sometimes, you, begin, you wonder whether they are serious. For example, I am not satisfied with the conclusion of the police about the killers of Gulag. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. These people traveled 17 kilometers from the scene where they, where, where they did the act, and then the next you said you, you said they were selling onions. And then they were selling, mm -hmm. I mean, they were selling onions, which they seized from, uh, was it a truck? Uh, from mm -hmm. Northerners, and, and then, all of then they, 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 you engage them. You didn't. You didn't. You couldn't even arrest any of Anybody. them. And, and all, so we are not. The whole thing is shoddy. Now you you make you 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 make noise about you know accosting hundred people coming mm -hmm. from the north. Mm -hmm. You make a lot of noise about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you say okay. You didn't even find anything uh, incriminating. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, with them. Okay. Like he said. Have you profiled them? What is the outcome of that investigation? So we need to be very serious with dealing with this issue. Then another thing is this. Police shouldn't, police shouldn't because of pressure, okay, starts to pick people randomly. Because in the East, people are also complaining. Mm -hmm. They are okay, complaining. Let's, let's they are say, complaining. Let's they say are really complaining. complaining. They're complaining that they are, that they are arresting now them, we, attacking them randomly. We, we talk about bandits in the North. We know the people responsible that, look, these are guys that you mentioned. And now, we don't know those people for maintaining an escalating crisis in the Southeast. It's, it's uh, a particularly complex situation. Mm -hmm. um, in one breath, you can say the people behind this are the members of the military wing of IPOP. IPOP. But you could also um, say it looks like there is political undertone, especially given the fact that um, some politicians loyal to the current governor have been 
routinely targeted. But it all depends. There could be a kind of uh, coalition against the governor, uh, made up of politicians, made up of elements from IPOP, because this was the governor who invited the Air Force to bomb the Olu, Olu Forest, where um, yes, guys. members of the military wing of IPOP, IPOP were believed to be hiding. So all kinds of people could be behind this. But if we simply uh, want to think that, oh, this is all politics, because the governor of Imo has been saying that, has been blaming politicians mm -hmm. for what's happening, mm -hmm. then how do you explain the killings in Ebony? Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about killings, more people have been killed in Ebony than any other states of the Southeast. So many attacks have happened. Um, INEC buildings have been burnt in Ebony. Of course, the Ebony governor does not have the, um, the, 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 the kind of um, emergence that angered people like that of the Imo governor. Then how do you talk about Enugu? Enugu has always been a very peaceful yes. state, a state yeah. that you would love to go to at, mm -hmm. at any point. But Enugu is also facing its own fair share of these attacks, you know? In, uh, a, a football coach was just uh, kidnapped uh, uh, some hours ago. So it's a problem stretching across the southeast. So it's, it's not limited to Imo State alone. So when I hear the governor simply saying this is political, this is political opponents, but this is a problem that is spreading. We have the same problem in Ebony. We have it in uh, Anambra. We have it in uh, in uh, in uh, Enugu. Even in Abia. That is why, Abia, yeah. if our security forces are to investigate this thoroughly, I'm sure, certain that they will be able to locate where this problem comes from. And they have also shown some videos of people uh, who are who are arrested who are said to be members of the ESN, ESN. Mm -hmm. what have they been able to, get to, to desilt from, from uh, these interviews? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, from these uh, uh, interrogations that they've carried out. That should be able to lead us to where this problem has arisen from. Oh, but as I said earlier, yes, there could be political undertone. There could also be um, the IPOB... Uh, um, 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 interest in this whole thing, or I, I pop a contribution to this problem, but they have to investigate holistically because, from the look of things, this problem cannot be pinned to just uh, one source mm -hmm. in the southeast. So the, the, we, we've got to do a lot more to try to identify where this problem is emanating from. Since we've sent the IRT team to that place, I believe that by now we should have a fair idea of where this problem uh, has arisen from and we should be able to find a solution to these killings before they degenerate. The longer it takes us to deal decisively with this problem, mm. the worse things uh, will get in the Southeast. Okay, and finally on the show today, the great American football coach, Bia Bryant, once said that the price of victory is high, but so are the rewards. This is the feeling within the camp of the governor of Ondo State, Oluwaruti Miakeredolu, after the Court of Appeal upheld his victory in October 2020. Now, speaking after the five-man panel upheld the judgment of the tribunal which validated his re-election, Governor Akeredolu vowed to continue his developmental strides in the states, but a Yitayo Jagede of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, than the PDP East Party, they are determined to seek redress of the Supreme Court. Let's share the story of the governor with you. A day after the Court of Appeal sitting in Akure upheld the re-election of Governor Rutimi Akere Dolu, top government officials and party supporters 
while the airport to welcome Governor Akeredolu from Abuja, where he attended a meeting. Outside the airport, residents of Akure, including motorcyclists, artisans, among others, trooped out to receive the governor. The crowd moved with the governor in his convoy through major streets of Akure. President thronged the street to give the number one citizen a rousing welcome. <laughs> and then later, because Governor Akeredolu dedicated his victory case, uh, at the Court of Appeal so to Almighty God. He said he is not bothered the by the decision God. of his opponent to challenge his victory at the Supreme Court. This time that it's like throwing the cutlass up, throw it up a hundred times when it gets down. It will fall flat. There's nothing, I, I, I have no fear. Uh, the case is, 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 is the flimsiest case uh, you can ever find. So we are confident of victory by the grace of Almighty God. I'm not distracted in any way. You can see what we, are, you can see what we have done in, in 100 days. I will continue to do it. This will be the dismissed in about 60 days maximum. So yeah, I'm not distracted in any way. Others also described the court judgment as victory for democracy. Really elated because this is victory for democracy, as you can see. You all witnessed the October 10 elections in this state. Everything went, was free and fair, and the governor got the highest votes ever in the elections of the state. So it's unimaginable that someone has gone to court to challenge the victory of Arakuni, Oluwaro Timi, Odwayo, Akiridu, SAN. You were all living, living witnesses. So it gives us a lot of cause to jubilate that we have won at the Akikpa Court. And we know, we, we hope they will not go <laughs> to the Supreme Court. But if they go there, we surely win again. You can see what is happening. The people, of, the good people of Nondo say they are very, very happy. And that is what you see. The, demonstra the demonstration of the happiness of people, that's what you see today. It's victory for the people of Ondo State, victory for democracy. We give glory to Almighty God. The attention of political pundits and residents of the Sunshine State will shift to the Supreme Court, which is the final arbiter in the case. Ayadeji Moradeyo, CBC News, Akure. Yes, as they call the name, Arakun. This is actually his um, forte, mm -hmm. as in he has yeah. been an electoral um, uh, tribunal <laughs> lawyer of uh, repeat exactly. for a long time now. It's, uh, it's, it's facing the heat <laughs> now. And, you know, interestingly, a Yitai or Jagede SAN too, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Now, the PDP don't want to go to the Supreme Court. What is it about this case from the tribunal that we have the Court of Appeal, which is the second to the last bus stop? Well, I, I think it's a good thing because there is a particular uh, part of the case that mm. uh, the Supreme Court has to rest and decide on and let mm. the matter rest finally. Mm. Well, it was called pre-election matter. Mm. That's the argument of APC. Mm. Uh, the argument that uh, the May Bala uh, Boni being oh, governor, oh, being oh, governor of Yobe State, State, and then at the same time being uh, the, the chairman the of national APC. Chairman. Now they, 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 they cited uh, a constitution of the APC saying that you cannot hold two positions. That two positions. They also cited the constitution at the section 183 of the constitution saying that a governor cannot hold another political position. Now, the issue, they are... They are, they are, they are uh, ultimately, yes. the Boni um, Esco exactly. presented the candidate that is, that they were of Akele Dulu. They, that is, they did not mm -hmm. have a, a local standing to sign the nomination mm -hmm. of, of Akele Dulu and his deputy. Now, the appeal court agreed. Hmm. If, 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 if they agreed with that, that's why they said, okay, this case is partially allowed and partially dismissed. dismissed. Now, so they are saying that, now the election was, a, it, there's no doubt about it. Um, 
Akei Donu won that election by a landslide. But this is a technicality. They are still, mm. they are, mm. they are contesting. Now, it's, it could be tricky. It's very tricky. It's a technicality. And I think it gives an opportunity for the Supreme Court, you know, to make a final decision on, on it, which is going to be a kind of precedent mm. for, uh, for, for, uh, for the uh, judgment or cases mm. on, on, this kind of, uh, on this kind of issue. Mm. So it, I, I like it. I like the fact that they are going to the, uh, to the Supreme Court to, to mm. test it. So mm. let's wait for the Supreme Court and see what it will decide on this issue. Um, um, do they, I don't know. The lawyers, I mean, yes, politicians, lawyers, they are very, very imp impossible people. Now, I, I ran an election with you, and I'm not going to the tribunal on the basis that I won this election beyond reasonable doubt. I'm not questioning the, the process that, brought, that you. <laughs> brought your candidacy. What do you make of this? Hello, Gina, are you there? I, I've listened to some of the arguments made. I, I want to say that this will most likely serve as a lesson to the, to the APC because clearly the appellants did not join Governor May Malabune in this suit. Mm -hmm. If they had joined Governor May Malabune in this suit, maybe the outcome would have been different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the appeal courts have found that mm -hmm. May Malabune was cited in the uh, by the appellant as someone who was occupying two positions. Mm. You did not join him in the suit. Mm. So be, for not joining him in the suit, mm. the appeal court um, was the opinion that he did not get fair hearing. The appeal court was also of the opinion that Governor Akre Dolu could not be vicariously liable uh, for, for that because the again crisis within the APC. May Malabune didn't get a chance, a chance to, to defend, defend himself. Hmm. <laughs> These are technical issues in law, but they are also very valid issues. Mm -hmm. If you do, if you fail to, if you fail to join someone in a matter like this and you want judgment entered against that person. Mm. It's not going to happen. Jagede was not contesting the fact that he lost the election. He was more interested in the internal that affairs of the of APC. Them. And their own argument was that May Malabune was the one who signed he that document yes. affirming that um, Aketi and his deputy were the candidates of the party. Hmm. May Malabune was the one who signed. But hmm. the argument of the APC uh, lawyers is that May Malabune was not occupying that position in full capacity, that he was not drawing salary as a full time chairman <laughs> of the All Progressive you Congress. Complex. Therefore, <laughs> their <laughs> argument is that. As that he was doing that work more like an ad hoc ad work, hmm. he was not doing it full time. Hmm. Pro bono. That if he was doing it full time, <laughs> he was drawing full salary, then it could be argued that he was occupying that position. Hmm. Of course, as I said earlier, the big error that I think that they have made, that the uh, Jagadeh and his team made, was that May Malabuni was not joined in this. Joined. Hmm. And when you make that kind of critical error. You've, you've made it easy for your opponent to, <laughs> to, to claim victory. Yeah, exactly. And at the level of the Supreme Court, I don't think that they can, they can uh, lead enjoy, evidence enjoy. that they did not bring up during the, mm. I mean, uh, in the trial court. Exactly. 
Is it not too late to join him? No, but well, they, they might think that since APC <laughs> was joined, it will be too late. You know, get your... <laughs> <laughs> no, it will be too late. No, because the thing is, I think this should serve as... We can only speculate. Yeah, we are just speculating. Yes, you know, because, because exactly. the Supreme Court will not have we'll the final say. want to have the final say. said, it will not have a reference point. Exactly. You know, to look at it and then analyze it. You know, my, my, my own um, point is just one APC in quotes, would have lost, just like Jide said, if they had put their house in order, you know. If they don't put their house in order, something like this might come up in future. So no. they need to put their house in order. Don't that forget, Mill Malabuni and his team now, they are seeking they are an extension, extension of that. You understand? You know, and that is said not to be in their constitution. For if something is not in your... Why can't you quickly do whatever you want to do? Do your do convention, convention sharp, and so sharp, that you have, everybody will have rest of mind and then they will go for the battle, any battle they want to face. Like that. You know, <laughs> but they are just doing permutation and uh, thinking, waiting, the, waiting doing this. You understand? To, to, the convention might not come earlier and than December. But do you, just like Jide said, if Muni, um, um, Mala Muni was included mm. in this matter, would have been saying another thing completely today. Mm. But this is luck. I mm. want to say this is luck, but mm. the case is still in the Supreme Court. It is the Supreme Court that will now decide. Yeah. But okay. I'm looking at it from this perspective of the Nigerian democracy should stop moving Always going to the Supreme Court oh, for them to decide who will be governor. The ultimate who decider be should be the election people. day. Is the ballot. The ballot. Exactly. Go there, vote, and then when once they announce, they go be. Mm, thank you, thank you. I want to thank you, um, Mr. Paul Dada. Thank you for your contribution and the pirated man himself. As <laughs> got <laughs> James, thank you for your contribution and Omo uh, Atata of Okuland. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> we pray for you as you <laughs> you go back to your <laughs> your town. <laughs> and on the, on the day that your enemy has a case against you, <laughs> may he fail to join you. <laughs> may he fail to join you properly. <laughs> and that's our package today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. And don't forget to join us on Journalist Hangout on Sunday. That's from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili.